past seven till just before nine o'clock. Uh, the only two months we don't meet is in August um, because of some holidays. It might just come a little bit earlier this year, this year, um, and also December just because of Christmas. Um, well, some of us do, but we just go out and get drunk. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. that's, that's true. <laughs> you guys let the team down last time. We were there. Yeah, we were there. <laughs> So, um, so that's a little bit about us and what we do. Um, we are on Twitter, Facebook, and the reason why I mention that is if you've got a local business and you want to share your news, um, please do so. Um, all of the um, addresses are here. Just tag us in. We'll reshare it on the Facebook page and on Twitter for free. That's what we do. Um, we've got over a thousand, uh, about nearly 1,100 likes down on the Facebook page. It is really growing quite quickly. Um, and on Twitter, I think just under the 500 mark. That's only been going for a short time. Facebook's a bit longer. Um, so it does get picked up and there's some good comments on there, so it's a good opportunity for you to sell your business. Um, just in the room, um, we've got Lola from the business growth team for the council. Um, so if you've not met Lola before, if you've got any questions about opening a business or running a business in Redcar in Cleveland, um, please go and see Lola or just get her email address. Um, I know she's very, very busy at the moment, so you might have to wait a little bit for an appointment, but certainly have a chat with her um, at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Carver um, from Festival Thrift and she's going to bring up a presentation. So thank you for having me, as I said, thanks for the intro. So I just um, wanted to talk a little bit about me first and explain like, kind of what I do and the makeup of the festival team. So I'm a freelancer and so is everybody else that works on the Festival of Thrift. So we all work part time in the freelance capacity. So what's great about that is we all get to work on other cultural projects as well and we kind of bring that to the mix. So. Um, <coughs> when I started working on Festival of Thrift, it, like, it sounds really cheesy and it is a little bit, but it was like a dream come true and like my life has never been the same since. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to talk, I tell you a little bit about something that happened a couple of weeks ago. We went to, we got nominated for a culture award, um, which is a regional award celebrating culture. And it was at Middlesbrough Town Hall, because Middlesbrough Town Hall's got this great renaissance and it was the weekend before BBC Big Weekend and there's tons going on and it was all about the borough and we'd been nominated, nominated for the third time and we didn't win but that's not the point of my story. Jane Tarr, who is Head of Arts Council England, got up to present the award and in the intro to her presentation she recounted a story about visiting Red Car a couple of weeks before and she said I went to Red Car and I went for a business meeting and then I went into a and the person in the bar talked about how great Red Car was and how it was on the up and how I was sat in the northern clock quarter, the new cultural area in Red Car. And she ended up staying overnight in Red Car and had a lovely time. I had had a couple of gins by this point, so I whooped. I was the only person in the room <laughs> whooping. But why I whooped was I've been working in cultural events and culture for over 10 years now. And it was the first time that I was sat there and somebody just talked about either they weren't paid to do it, they weren't bribed to do it, they just talked about Red Car and in a cultural capacity, not in a, you know, this has happened in Red Car. And it was just a genuine, I was quite impressed by Red Car. And so, you know, I just wanted to start on that positive note because that's very much how we as a fest of the festival team feel about Red Car. And, you know, we want to be part of the journey. We want to be there and continue to be there when you know we're on that national map and you know we're competing with Middlesbrough or whoever it might be. So that brings me nicely to this beautiful picture. This was taken in this building and it was the night before the festival. It was Friday night last year and we did a parade in Redcar Town Centre. I don't know if anybody here came and saw that parade, but it was the first time we did it and we raised additional funding and we brought lots of community groups together and we brought people on bikes because we had a cycling scheme. Some people said we were mad, but we did it anyway. And we, um, it was, I think we started here and then went right onto the seafront. And it was amazing. It was a small, perfectly farmed parade. And 
it was our first step at trying to bring the festival into the town centre and embed it more into the community and we're hoping to carry on that. It is funding reliant, we have to raise funds, additional funds to what we already do to put that on, but plans are in motion and hopefully we're there, so hopefully we're gonna be having another town centre parade on the Friday the 13th of September. Um, and, you know, lots of young, old people, the theme yet to be announced, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep you posted on that and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So just an overview of Festival of Thrift, I'm going to run through this because it's the, it's the scars on the doors and you know, everybody's been and everybody knows, but just in case, we are a multi-award winning festival, we're in our seventh year, we started off in Darlington for three years and then we came to Kurt Lincoln in Redcon in 2016 and here we are still. Um, what we like to do is bring a mix of artist makers, artisans, businesses to share the sustainable message. So. All of the fun stuff is there, but it's showcasing that key sustainable message and doing thoughtful stuff, creative stuff, things that make you think about it two weeks afterwards. And you're like, ooh, that, ooh I remember that. Um, and just as an aside, sustain, look, sustain, you'd think I'd know how to say that by now, wouldn't you? Sustainability is really fashionable at the moment. And one of our key things is that we want to get it out there, but we've been doing this for seven years now. So, you know, we're in it for the long haul. And, you know, it's not for us about making money and monetizing sustainability. It is really about making a difference and changing the way people live. This year, Stella, who I'm sure you will meet, I mean, we might come back again and talk about it. She always comes up with the most amazing and challenging themes. And so this year she's done it again with Clean Air and the Moon Landing Anniversary. Who would have thought about putting those two things two together? But Stella has. So um, we're celebrating that in lots of creative ways, which I'll talk about a bit later. And just a reminder of the dates, we're actually t a week earlier this year because we don't want to clash with Stokesy's show. So we're going to kind of give everybody a bite of the cherry this year. So here's another great picture of our parade. And this was some young women that actually have been working with us through the year for the processions march and then they brought their flag, Women of Steel, to Red Car and proudly displayed it in our parade. And it's just an example of how we're trying to embed ourselves in community and you know, it's not just about the weekend of the festival for us. Again, I'm gonna go through these because they're quite repetitive, but you know, it's, it's worth knowing that 93% of our visitors are still just coming for the day and not staying overnight. Something we're really keen to change um, it's not the easiest thing and it's something that a lot of festivals and destinations struggle with is like converting those day to overnight stay but we're really keen to do that. Um, some other factors are that 23% um, of visitors were first timers so we're again really keen to get that up so we want people to, we still want people coming and repeating but we want to really attract those new visitors that haven't been potentially haven't been to Red Car, haven't been to the North East, but they see the Festival for Thrift and that then introduces them to a whole world of pleasure. 30% um, of visitors spent a full day at the festival with an impressive 17% want spending one and a half days or more. So this is essentially a lot of people come, they don't just come for one day, they'll come back, or they feel like they could come back for another day. And again, we really want to capitalise on that and sell other things to do. So, you know, you could come for the weekend. Um, and again, that's what we said, we just need to, uh, we're really focusing and putting a lot of resource behind dwell time and increasing overnight stays. So it's just important for us to highlight that we're aware of that and we're, we're trying to do something about that in, our, in the marketing that we do. Another example of where we came out into Red Car Town Centre last year, I don't know if anybody came to see this, but it was one of those bonkers things that I didn't really understand until I saw it, and then I was like, oh, this is genius. So essentially, um, there was a, film, a filmmaker whose name I can never pronounce, so I'm not going to, um, but he came and did a thrifty version of atonement. So we used loads of local volunteers. We got loads of stuff donated. We have the, he was from Red Card Gym Club, that young, impressive man there. And he just did a one-shot version 
of atonement redux and it's still there, it's still out in the public domain, so if anybody wants to um, look at it, it's still there on our website and uh, BBC Radio, Radio 4 came and did a huge co coverage and article about it, it was amazing. Um, and it's just, again, like reinforcing that we're trying really hard to make it more than just the festival weekend in the, the activity that we do and, and kind of get the national spotlight on Red Car as well. And as part of that, we had a partnership with Stockton Riverside College and they came in and did all the makeup. And as you can see, that's amazing, that makeup. And we are continuing that partnership this year and they're going to come and do the makeup for our fashion show, our thrifty fashion show, which is really great. So again, this is these stats again, but I couldn't, I had to just put it all in because it won't let me amend this piece of artwork. But um, it just shows the kind of figures and it shows the spend into local economy, which is really impressive. And that is done completely. Um, we don't do that, we pay a company to do it, so we haven't fixed that cost at all. That is genuinely how much people spend when they come and visit the festival. And if you have a look at that figure that each visitor spends, it's £48.70, and that is increasing each year considerably. Um, I think it's like last year was £23 something, so it's nearly doubled in the year. What that says to us, and we won't know until we get a third year's data, is that people are coming with the intention of spending, that you know, they, they have that mindset, which for local businesses is, is really good because it doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that they're just gonna stay in the festival and spend. There is the potential for them to spend in the wider area, especially if we can encourage them to overnight stay. So the PR and the marketing, um, we're growing in popularity. Um, we are attracting more people from the Tees Valley. So in our first few years, it tended to be Redcar, Middlesbrough. We're now getting people from Hartlepool and Darlington and further afield Durham as well. Um, our Facebook interactions are just growing. We're generating huge amounts of sessions on our new website and our media. We are just getting in places that we never even thought we'd get. So uh, last year, just before the festival, they mentioned us on Countdown, and like our Twitter just went mental, and I was like, what are you on about Countdown? And then obviously had to reply to it. So it's great, it's really, really good, and you know, the more support when things like that happen, the better, because it's not just about the festival, it's about Red Hall as well, and Tees Valley. So this is our lovely meal, and I've been speaking about this today, and I just put this in, because it's just such a nice picture, and it's really nice, and it's just an example of the community coming together. This um, town meal, we, showcase a town each year, and we, the menu is inspired by that town. So this town is Gisborough. Uh, the first year we did Red Car. No, sorry, this town is Salt Bay. We're doing Gisborough this year. So um, if anybody has any quirky food stories about Gisborough, please do let us know, because the menu is then inspired by those stories. So I think the one that stands out in my mind is the Salt Bay menu. We had a Henry Peas pudding, which I just thought was genius. So. Um, yeah, and I've mentioned a little bit about how we want to be more than just the festival weekend. So one of the ways we're hoping to do that is we're launching a digital platform. We've already launched it with our stall holders, and it's called Thrift Three Six Five. See what we did there? So we're not just a weekend. And as part of this platform, we want to, it to be community up and we want it to be organic, so we want on there to create a sustainable digital community that basically gives people a platform to grow, share, be inspired. So I can only show you this because this is <coughs> the early stages of it, but we will be sharing this in social media and we'd, we'd ask you to go on, have a little nosy and tell us what you'd like to see on there because that is essentially for the community it's just something that we felt was needed in this area so we're, so an example might be that we would have a list of sustainable suppliers on there that everybody could access and potentially you know I see it that maybe some buyers would get together and share the costs of buying sustainable supplies through something like this so it's about kind of it's very much about sharing and being sustainable 
Um, there is a shop element to that, so our traders have all used this to purchase stalls this year. Our volunteers will create an account and then they will use it to swap um, information. We'll hopefully be able to provide more volunteering options on there. And it, it just, you know, it'll, it'll grow, hopefully. It is very much experimental. So, you know, we really like any feedback on that. So I will share that when it's ready to be shared. And, you know, if this, if this group particularly would, could have a look at it, that would be amazing. Um, we're always looking for materials um, to repurpose and recycle. So I don't know if anybody's been and built a go-kart or a den. Uh, we're potentially talking the idea of building tree houses this year. So if any businesses think, oh, I don't want to throw that away, let us know because we might be able to find a use for it. And we totally, you know, if we can use some of your ways we'll we'll sh we'll do a shout out on social media and say thanks to so and so for donating whatever it is i mean have a look we do do regular call outs we can use we make jam so we can always use fruit and veg we obviously have all the donating stuff we have um call outs for swap shops so people can come and like swap clothes and we also use um this year we're going to be using ribbons and material to decorate the site so it's, it's that kind of thing that, you know, we'd love local people to donate because then we can give them the shout out instead of having to go further afield. We'd love for you to join our parade, however that may be. We're not going to be doing it on bikes this year. Um, the, the theme is yet to be announced, but once we announce the theme, we'd like as many people to join in as possible because it's, it's a chance to really kind of celebrate in the town centre that weekend. If you don't want to join it, come and watch it and actually encourage other people to come and watch it because then the more people that we get watching that parade, then the better impact that is on the local businesses in the town centre. So we did get a really good number of people and people did mention to us that they wanted a coffee, but it was half past six. So <laughs> it was just like, you know, I think we, I think we did that one, but, you know, and, and it's, that is not just red car. I used to work at Stockton Riverside Festival and they had exactly the same problems. So, you know, it's not, but it would be great to just spread that word. Sharing the law. So obviously we have a hashtag for fest. We run all those social media channels. Any shares would be greatly appreciated and we will try and reciprocate where possible. What I do say is, we get a lot of people tagging us in posts, which is great and lovely, but if it has a sustainable message, then we're a lot more likely to share it because we just have to be kind of careful about what, what things are going out. And it's, it's not, it's, we'd love to share everybody's, but it's just, we do have to be careful that it's not opposed to our sustainable message. Um, what we've developed this year is the thrift kit. So I will send this out and it'll be available on um, our website where we're gonna create a few more of these. But there's a pack of logos, things that are specifically shaped for social media that just flag up the festival. So we've got the, obviously the date, in different formats, and then we've got the ones that like, I'm part of, we've got one that's we're part of, we're gonna have one that, um, I think there's one that's gonna be save the day. But any, if you want one that would specifically work for you, just let me know, because I can just get it done. So if there's something that would work better for your business, just let us know, because it's you know five minutes of my time and we just get it out there. As part of this thrift kit, I've produced uh, some copy that you can just copy and paste which is just just telling you what the festival is there's some images that we would love you to use a selection of all years and there is there's a, a press release in there as well with some of our key facts in and links to our dropbox so please do have a play around with that might not be for you it's not for everybody but we'd love you to have a look at it and tell us what might be for you if this isn't so some of the things we've tried, we've, we've tried to think about how, how local businesses can get involved. Before I started, there was the idea of a voucher book that was targeted at local businesses in, in Redcar. And, uh, well, actually, it was the wider 
um, it was Red Can Cleveland, and the idea was that the voucher book would be available at the festival, and the vouchers in there would have a lifetime of up to three months, which would then encourage people to come back to Red Can and spend money. For whatever reason, and it wasn't in, on my watch, so I don't know why it just didn't happen, and it could be that businesses just didn't feel it was worth their while, but that offer is still on the table if people would like to do that. And it might be, we might not have enough time to do it for this year, but it might be something we look for 2020. I still think there's a value in that, even if it was something we did digitally. But again, you know, I'm not a business in Red Can Cleveland, I'm just a marketing person that plants it and says, this is really good. So I'm more than happy if people wanted to do that, to come back and talk about it. Um, but you know, and so is Stella. You know, Stella was the one that, that brought my attention to it. This year we're having a speaker's corner at the festival and we're inviting anybody and everyone to come and talk for five minutes about an issue that's important to them. And Stella felt that this might be something that local businesses would be interested in doing. It could be something related to sustainability, it might not be, it might just be about working in Red Car, about working in Tees Valley. Um, <laughs> if that is something that floats your boat, please do contact me. I'm info at festivalofthrift.co.uk. People's Encyclopedia. I don't know if anybody saw this in the first year that we were at Festival of Thrift, but this is a quirky take on an encyclopedia because it's people's knowledge. Stella's wanting to set this up again on a double-decker bus this year, so essentially, if there's something you know loads and loads about, or you know somebody that is just like a geek about something and needs to share that knowledge, then we're going to set up this encyclopedia that essentially, and it might be lots of things, it might just, I mean, I'm thinking of putting my husband on there so he can just bar the pants off other people for a day. <laughs> and, and the idea is that you come in and if there's something, there's something, there's like books, and the books have little topics on, and you pull out a book and then the, the person who has that specialist interest is in that book and then you can ask that person questions or have a chat with them. Um, so again, if there's anybody <laughs> that will be interested in doing that, along with my husband, please do get in touch. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about viewpoints here. Um, this is something that I haven't got any slides about and it's, that's my bad really, I should have done that. But, Viewpoints is, we started it last year and it's a Tees Valley Wide programme with Tees Valley Combined Authority and it's again taking us out of the festival and across Tees, out of Red Cart and across Tees Valley and I don't know if anybody saw, there was a car with a cow on the roof last year driving around Tees Valley, that was part of Viewpoints and that was about clean air um, and how large-scale cow farming is producing so much methane that you know we, we essentially have to look at it and then there was various other things happening um, as part of viewpoints and this year we are having five artists across Tees Valley one of them is going to be based in Red Car and that's what me and Mark have been spending the morning doing hatching plans about that which we will launch on Thursday and we're going to try and get an installation or an artwork in practically every borough in Tees Valley. And that's going to be starting on the 12th of September and running in the lead up to the festival and finishing on the 19th. For that particular project, we are going to be based in Palace Hub as well. So again, it's another way of us being more visible, having the festival in a more visible place. So we'll We'll be launching a bit, why I'm being a bit cagey about this is because we're launching it on Thursday and we're just, we're trying to kind of like build anticipation on that. But for 2020, we're going to put a call out for artists to be directly based in local businesses and specifically looking at making processes. So Stella wanted me to talk about that and just kind of plant those seeds that if there's any businesses that you work with, and um, making processes can cover a whole raft of things, but it's just that flag up that she's really, we, we are really keen to kind of embed that viewpoint into local businesses as well. Um, so that's another, another thing that people can get involved with. And then the last thing is really, what would you like us to do? Because we're, 
as I said, we're, we're a small team and we're all freelance and we're all part time, but we do sometimes make assumptions about what people would like us to do, which is really great that you've asked us here because it gives it gives that kind of two way conversation. So, you know, please do give us some ideas about what you'd like us to do moving forward. Some of them we may not be able to do for this year, but we can certainly look at them for future years to come. And I think that's it. We'll obviously see you there. And yeah, any questions or any ideas that you'd like to put to us? Any questions, anybody? Just, just, you mentioned 2020. Do you foresee to stay in red car indefinitely? Every year, we take, we take it year by year. So it's, there's a lot of factors that kind of make the final decision. And thankfully, they're all out of my hands. <laughs> um, but, at, you know, the, the, the noises that are being made and the conversations that we're having currently would imply that we'll be here in 2020. But <laughs> it's difficult, you, you know, I can't speak for the, the, the powers that be. So I hope we will. Do you know what route the parade's going to take? It'll be very similar to last year. And I, last year, so let me just get my bearings. It came. <laughs> were you on it, Mark? You were on the parade. Can you remember? I was. Can you, can you remember? From here, um, down Station Road to the front, and then from there along to, to the bandstand. Yeah, to the bandstand. Yeah. So it'll be. So, so we're taking part of the town and part of the front. Yeah. And we. Last year, um, we probably got that route out a little bit late, so now we know it, now we've done it, we'll get that out a lot earlier because we've got, we've got it all there, so we'll hopefully be able to encourage more people to come. Do you know when the funding, when, you, when you'll know about the funding regarding <coughs> the community parade and the workshops? Um, no. Sorry, we don't. Um, we're, we're, we're going out to a few places at the moment to try and get some. We have got some of it. It's just probably not quite enough. It's not as much as last year, and obviously we wanted to do bigger, better. Yeah. So um, it, that, unfortunately, would probably be a stellar question, but I think it's just we're, just we're just knocking on lots of doors at the moment and seeing where we get. So. But, y yeah, uh, something will... Something will happen, and we're just hoping that we just get a bit more money so it can be more. <laughs> Do you think it would be the same venues as last year? Because we had something in mind uh, mm. when we were involved last year in the workshops, and people really enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it'll be the same venues and more. You know, if people want to be involved in that parade, we're not going to say no. Well, within reason. <laughs> So I'm like, Cara, why did you tell them that? <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we, as the more the merrier, and yet, yeah, so if it's the same, the the only thing that I know probably won't happen is we had Cardbardia, and um, we had a few people that are now going to be working on other projects at the festival, so they might not be a, the workshop leaders might not be the same. So okay. it's just, but again, it's just we're, we're still waiting, but it'll be the same. Stellar projects will will be doing it who did it last year. So they'll have all the contacts and they'll be approaching everybody that did it last year. I went viral in Kazakhstan with a cardboard of your head and a club in my hand. <laughs> this, this man knows how to move. Oh, oh, that's that's really it was a really good video. <laughs> that's I should have brought it. No, that's not why I was you were viral in Kazakhstan. <laughs> that was just, you just didn't know about the other times. Oh, yeah, that was really good. <laughs> that's a, that's why I love the festival because it's just so random. You get a man wrapped dressed in brown in paper and wrapped in cardboard. <laughs> yeah. What do What do you think people in red car? Or what do you think is the key then to getting people to stay overnight? She said that's one of your challenges. Yeah, well, what well, I mean, it's it's a it's difficult because the bed stock isn't as high as we'd like it, and we tend to fill it just putting the festival on. Yeah. So then we have this kind of, especially in marketing, because you're telling people to come, but then you have to be mindful that they might not be able to get any get to stay anywhere near the festival, and then does that create a barrier? So it's it's a, a bit of a complex message, and of course where it is in Kirkleatham, 
it's not within walking distance from the town centre anyway. So then there's another. So, so you could say right. Well, go to Middlesbrough. There's loads of places in Middlesbrough, but then you know. The Hope Road car. It, yeah, exactly. So it's and and even then, if you were staying in Middlesbrough, how would you get sustainably to leave them? I mean, obviously you may drive, but then we're trying to you know it's kind of a bit of a mixed message and. Yeah. So it's it's quite a complex message that we need. You know, we. We, we would welcome support and advice on and you know anecdotes from people that have visited and struggled. Um, hi, I've um, had a stall for the past couple of years at the Festival of Food, so we spoke to you know hundreds of people mm. who have come through mm. and um, last year especially there seemed to be a lot more like coach trips of people. Right, interesting. And so when we were chatting to those who were coming from like Leeds and all mm. over the place mm. and I don't think they had much kind of advice on where they mm. could stay. So when they were Googling it, yeah, it was automatically it was just, coming up as, as Middlesbrough yeah. and the bigger hotels and things mm. like that. So it might be quite handy to get a big list together of all the yeah. things and things. Yeah, and, um, and we, d we do do that on the website, but we possibly need to make it a bit more prominent. Possibly yeah. when people buy their tickets, mm -hmm. you could attach well, there's, there's guide. Most people, there's no tickets right. apart from, well, there's the town community meal. That you buy tickets for, but they're only. It's, that's only six hundred. So. Because you pay the car parking, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry. If they're buying tickets for the coach trip, mm -hmm. it, could, it could be that. Yeah. The, no, because uh, you know, I didn't know that any. Co that's the first I've ever heard about coaches mm -hmm. coming. Oh, okay. So that's really interesting. Because yeah. I didn't even see them in the field. I but then maybe they got dropped off, or maybe they were in the field. It, it seemed to be on the Saturday morning. I remember mm. because it was they actually all turned up before the festival properly opened. Oh, right. So we were all like rushing around trying to get everything yeah, yeah. ready for like the, the, the time. Was it yeah. Yeah, yeah. And people came in early because we were right next to the Calvary. Mm. Like, oh, where have you come from? They're like, oh, we've come from me. It's great. Damn it, we probably didn't even count those numbers. <laughs> I think, yeah. So let's add another. Let's add another thousand on. So, but yeah, like if we could. I suppose it's that data that we we don't know about, um, and you, but leave that. Well, I'll have a think about that. I'll have a talk with the team about yeah. how we because we were just completely unaware that is camping, is camping, camping not an option. Like, the problem with it, we'd love to do camping, but we'd also an evening events then. Well. Yeah, yeah, and we did. We tried it last year, and it was freezing. Yeah. <laughs> so cold. <laughs> yeah. We grinned. At it. So we we're only talking about it now. Yeah. We weren't actually admitting how cold it was, um, and. The night last year, the company that ran ran cinema and the camping, they managed the campsite for us, and that was why we did it because we just don't have the resource or the funding to manage a campsite. So we've we'd we'd love, and we've had conversations with various uh, private sector organisations about having a festival campsite and somebody running it because yeah, I think it'd be. Club. Have a well, lot that's and that's who we've had conversations with. The logical ones. Yeah, yeah. Fire, yeah. And we wouldn't be interested in taking any money or any profit from it, and we'd absolutely push everybody there because we get inundated with camping requests, but we just can't manage it ourselves at, as we are running at the moment. So, you know, if anybody's got a really big garden, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> we'll work with you. Um, <laughs> I think we're going to offer a little bit of camping for traders and artists this year, which we can manage. Um, so it is very much in our heads that we, you know, there's a need and we'd like to do it, and it kind of lends itself perfectly for it, apart from the weather. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of we just need somebody to come and come on board, and and, and that's you know it's a risk for anybody to do, you know it's a risk, and you know we wouldn't push anybody down that path at all, but. It's definitely, I mean, there is Baby Moon in Gisborough. Yeah, mm -hmm. Gisborough. And they're one of our partners and they're great, but it is just that little bit too far out for, for visitors to visualise that, that, you know, I think they just want to be as near to the site as possible. So, so we'll see. But yeah, that's really useful about the coaches and we'll kind of we'll, we'll digest that a little bit and see how we can bring that and and the other thing I was going to mention with accommodation and I don't know if there's anybody here that runs accommodation but if you have an Airbnb or thinking about doing an Airbnb please do let us know and we'll promote it because 
you know, in that week of the festival, we, like the, the, the Facebook inbox is ridiculous and they're all about where can we stay, we've tried Saltburn, we've tried Red Car and, you know, it's, it's, and then it's like, well, and we, do, and we do have a list that we send people to, but it's just, you kind of know when you send them, it's not really what they want to hear, they want to, like, they want to be in Red Car, essentially. Mm. So, you know, if there is, even for that weekend, if somebody you know is thinking about trialling Airbnb, that would be the weekend to do it. <laughs> Any other questions? I think there's some absolutely amazing opportunities here. I think there's loads more than what I would ever think of. Yeah. I mean, and then great things like for this year, but also like for next year yeah. as well. Yeah, and I think I think if I was thinking about this today, if I was running a business in Red Car, and you know, it's it's difficult sometimes to kind of you know, especially because Kurt Leatham isn't in the town, it's not in the town centre, it's not, you know, and it does feel a bit detached and, but I think if we work together and have that shared common message of, you know, in the lead up to the festival, are you coming, are you coming for our, like, weekend, it's great, you know, come, you know, come and have an ice cream, it's really busy in the morning, so come into Red Car in the morning, get a lemon top, have a coffee, then when the crowds have died down, go to the festival. Now, don't tell Stella I told you that, because she <laughs> want everybody there all day. But, you know, it, you know, we, we do have that issue where people all come at 10 o'clock, as we know, and we block the roads, and we get really, really told off by everybody and anyone. Um, and, and that is something also we need help with management of, you know, telling people which ways to come in so everybody doesn't come in the same way it's all about know. park and ride mm. to stop well, yeah we have cars. and we, we did try it the year before we did a bit of park and ride but it doesn't really it doesn't necessarily solve the problem because it's the roads coming in mm. so they would still get so what happened the year before was the park and ride bus got stuck, stuck in the traffic in so there was no benefit to them being in the park and ride because it, and, and that was partly because it, <laughs> it was an emergency kind of like, oh God, get the park and ride. Um, but we, yeah, they've looked at it. And I think this year we are getting, we're, we're spending more on traffic management than parking. Every year we spend more, as much as the budget allows to, to do that because we realise it is an issue. But one, but one of the issues is that people just come in. Yeah. They all come in the same way, and yeah. then the people coming from Red Car, ironically, <laughs> if you come from Red Car Town Centre, you get straight in. So there is, and I think there's that message of just talking, talking to people, and it, you know, are you coming? You know, the, there is Red Car Town Centre. You could get the train. You know, there's there's lots of options. There's lots of things people can do. Have a walk on the beach. You know, it's not just about the festival, and that's you know that's a key message that we want to get across but we'd love like other people to do that as well and you know we share share the wealth share the love you know there's if there's 35,000 visitors coming I'm sure we can get some of them to come and spend money in Red Car Town Centre. I was just thinking like some um I was looking at the Blue Dot Festival in Manchester mm -hmm. and obviously it's a complete different scale to this but one thing I've, I've read of interest that they um, they were doing like shuttle runs yeah to, to yeah, yeah. their back from one place mm -hmm. to the other so it's almost like, you know, you have a taste of red car and I know when, I don't know this is taking to the extremes, but if you go to like Tokyo or something like that, you're stuck at the airport mm. for like a few hours, they'll take you into the city for a couple of hours and then and bring you back. Though, yeah. So like, and I'm thinking it's like something like that would be well, great. In last year, I was really, really wanted to and failed miserably to get a shuttle bus from red car train station to the um, festival. And um, I wanted a Reva to sponsor it, yeah. and I talked and thought I just thought it was I just thought it was a no-brainer for them. Yeah. They put on a little shuttle bus, branded. They could do what they want on that bus. They've got a captive audience. Because I'd even said to them that there's no cash machine on site, so they could ferry people to like to and from cash machines as well. I was like, honestly, you'll have a bus full every time, yeah. but they just didn't go for it. And I still think that's an opportunity for somebody. Possibly to sponsor, local yeah, a, a local taxi firm, you know. And Torch is a member of this group. Yeah. Well, it might be something. I think it's a little. It, it's and even if. I think it's the bus itself has to be free. Yeah. 
yeah. the actual journey. Yeah. But then there's lots of things you could do. You know, you could take them to somewhere. You could, you know, there's lots, there's lots of marketing and PR in that kind of. Yeah. Um, so it's worth. Th- I do think it's a, an, an opportunity, and I, I, I did think it'd be perfect for a leave. I'm never going to get over it. I'm never going to get over it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, um, and I think that will solve a lot of the. Maybe it's something to have a conversation with Northern Wales well about. Well, that's who else I was talking to. That's so it was it because Northern own Arriva. Northern, yeah. no, hang on. Yeah. yeah. So it was Northern Rail and Arriva that were round the table, and they just. Yeah weren't interested. All they wanted us to do was adopt the train station. Because <laughs> I realised by the end, I was like, ah, <laughs> you just want us to adopt, all right. Um, so, and I haven't given up on that idea, and you know, it is something I think would make a huge difference in just connecting the town centre with the festival. What, what, what percentage of visitors, do you know that you, what percentage of visitors actually do travel by rail into their car? Well, we try and monitor it, but it's quite difficult. Um, not very. Right. It's not very high at all. I would I, like if it was if it was more than five percent, I'd be surprised yeah. because it's because they have to then get a bus yeah. off the train. So it's really difficult to sell it, like package it up. And we tried with Arriva. The last two years, we did an add-on fare. So if they've bought a, tra- a train ticket along that Newcastle to Saltburn route, yeah. they could get a discounted add-on fare for any of the buses in Redcar to take you to Kirkleatham. But even just saying it is complicated. But yeah. trying to get that in a kind of marketing, you know, yeah. and Ariva sent it out and we did. And I think we even had some posters up, but it just didn't really hit the, and I th- but I think if we, if we said there was a shuttle bus ferry, you know, get the train, and there's a bus that takes you straight into the festival and back out. And again, it would relieve the parking situation. Now, Stella will kill me for this, so nobody tell her. But if people parked in Red Cat Town Centre and then got a shuttle bus to the festival, that would relieve the traffic management and the parking. Yeah. Is, there any, what, is there any scope now, two, like next year, having two sites in effect, the, the main site in, a, in effect, the sub site well, near the, near the seafront? Yeah. Potentially, potentially, yeah. I mean, there's no reason why the festival can't get bigger. I mean, I would say that if the festival is going to expand, it might be the Friday for the parade. Mm. And then the morning we go. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 definitely options, but that's not my area. (laughs) I'm going to start talking about Stella. She's a creative genius, but I do think. There's definitely a appetite for growth, and you know we're definitely aware of the fact that you know it's 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 not in the town centre, but we're trying to kind of embed ourselves in lots of different projects. So we are trying to reach that town centre community and, and the wider community. It's not just Redcar Town Centre; it's the whole borough as well, and Tees Valley. Brilliant. I'm going to ask our singers and dancers: Are they going to be in the parade? I already am she was, yeah. in the parade, so yeah, my group will be in the parade. So we're linking in the sustainability, so all the costumes that are going to be made with the performing it at Surf as well. So I have a group at Saltburn called Destination Warriors, So we, but I'm also opening studios in Red Car. So to work with Festival of Thrift is pretty amazing. So bringing it into the town centre is something I'm quite keen to mm. work on because yeah. the studio is going to be in the town centre. All the kids, like it would be interesting mm. to kind of have that parade element. Yeah. Even the transport could be done in a really funky way. Mm. Like, oh, to- you could know, do it at the festival. It could yeah. be a performance from Town Centre. To I was there. thinking that when I was saying um, it. Yeah. yeah, it was calling out to me. Yeah. Said that <laughs> like, so I love a captive audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm thinking you're yeah, right, Dolly. You could sort of make yeah, we'll costumes on the yeah. Friday before yeah. the parade. Yeah. All the costumes so will be similar yeah. to the Oxfam thing. So it's all going to be recyclable. So it's very, very exciting. It's not. It did not last year, the year before, we had the um, rear view, which was the open to- top bus that went out into Redcar, and people loved that. Yeah. You know, that so was just. Surf, uh, I think, the it was at yeah. Surf as well. Yeah. yeah. So and and it's very, it's very kind of different. But then the concept of just taking people from the festival into Redcar really, because people didn't understand that there was more to it. 
So a lot of people got tickets for that. I mean, they were free. They just thought they were just going on like a, t a view, uh, like a, like a tourist bus round Red Can. They were buzzing about it. <laughs> so I, I do think, and then and then were really shocked when it was actually something quite arty and cultural. They were just like, oh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting. Because it started with this. Oh, well, I won't give it away because you might go one day. Um, but yeah, so I do think there's an appetite for that if it's done in the right way, and you know, and, and it's filling a need, which I, I feel personally is a need. Then you still be getting a broken down bus and and do and and repurpose it. it. I'll, well, I'll leave that to you. You look like yeah, somebody yeah. that might be up for that kind of thing. Drift, yeah, it, yeah. Well, that's it. Like, yeah, we're very thrifty. Yeah, that would be amazing. Students. Well, you, uh, see, I don't know anything about. I have to say, right. like, that's not my. But yeah, definitely a great idea. Like if somebody repurposed the bus. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other questions? Well, okay. If there's anything you know, people want to get in touch about, it's um, info at festival of thrift, which goes directly to me, or car at festival of thrift. <laughs> .co.uk. Facebook goes directly to me, as does Twitter, as does Instagram, so you can't really contact the festival without it passing through my desk, so um, yeah, just please do let us know, and if we can, and we think it fits, we will, um, you know, we don't, we're not in the business of saying no, unless it really, you know, we just, we do want to be an inclusive festival, um, and you know, if we can't look at it for this year, we'll certainly consider it for years to come. Right. Thanks very much indeed.